So we've talked about binary, and the question is, if we were in the 1940s, 50s, 60s, and we're either writing programs or inputting programs or trying to debug a program, then we can see how binary becomes a bit inefficient. It becomes very error-prone. It's very hard to sort of remember each byte. It's also very difficult to interpret what that is. So what we're looking at here is essentially a command from a 32-bit system, which would still work in today's system since they're backwards compatible. It is slightly simplified. If we look at this first byte here, these are actually opcodes, uh, each three of these. If we were responsible for understanding what these are, then we can, again, it's, it's, just, it's very difficult to say, well, 10111000 means we're going to move data to the EAX register. And similarly, the next one, 10111011, it's difficult to know that, that you know, that's supposed to mean going to the EBX register. So we need to get a way to sort of simplify the binary representations. So one idea might be to use a decimal system. If we look at this top value here and we write it in, we have, so that's what, 128 plus 32 is 160, plus 16 is 176, plus eight is 184. So we can see that this value is equal to 184. So you could say it's 184000 and then whatever this is, which looks like 5 plus 16 is 21. So in this case, you would say, OK, what do we have as opcode basically 184 in decimal? Uh, and then we have 21 here. So it really looks like this if we're doing it by bytes. So in a decimal system, we'd say, okay, 184 means to move to the EAX register, this value 21. And this is somewhat simplified, but this is basically what it's doing. We can see that this kind of works, but the problem is that we had to do all this calculation to get this value, so it almost defeats the purpose. It's slightly better than memorizing that 10111000 is moving uh, the EAX command. We could say move EAX, and this is just a 32-bit register. And what about, let's, let's test the other way around. And this is where it gets really kind of impractical. If we're getting 184 and we want to turn it to binary, there's two approaches. One is sort of intuitively knowing that uh, we, have a, we have 128 here. So we know that this is, 128 is a large portion of 184. So we'll turn that on and then we'll figure out the rest. The other way is just to do it mathematically. And the way that we convert a decimal number to binary is by dividing it by two. I'm going to start at the bottom and probably go upwards. So if we have 2 into 184, 2 into 184 goes 9 times, and 2 into 4 goes 2 times, and there is no remainder. So we write a 0. This is the way it works. And then 2 into 92, 2 into 9 goes 4 times with 1 remainder, and 2 into 12 goes 6 times. So you can see our binary pattern starting here. 2 into 46 goes two times, uh, and then three for the six, we have yet another zero. Two into two is one, two into three is also one, but now we have a one remainder, right? Because 11 times two is 22, so we have one remainder. And instead of putting like a decimal and, and doing it the way that we normally do, we just put the one right here, the remainder, and we move on. Two into 11, is 5, and we have another remainder, right? Because 2 times 5 is 10, and we're trying to get to 11. So we put the remainder here. 2 into 5 is 2. 2 times 2 is 4, so there is one remainder, right? 4 doesn't quite reach 5, so one remainder. 2 into 2 goes 1 time, and we have no remainder. And 2 into 1 goes 0 times, and we have a 1 remainder. So you can see that our value here, 10111000, is equal to 10111000, which was the original value that we got from up here. And then we turn it into decimal, and now we can turn it back into binary. So this is obviously not a very practical approach to do this, right? Uh, it doesn't quite make sense. So the question is, how do we represent binary numbers in a way that's very easy and reliable? And the answer is hexadecimal. So the way hexadecimal works is if we compare it to, to decimal. So decimal, we'll see that we have uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 
And then we run out of single digits. However, and we're using a four bit number here. For hexadecimal, we have the same zero, same one, and it's the same all the way up to nine. But after nine, where decimal is forced to stop and overflow to one zero for 10, adding a new column, hexadecimal continues with a single column. And we just borrow from the alphabet. So we have A, B, C, D, E, and F. And something very interesting is happening if you can, uh, if you, if you sort of notice it. In a four bit system, decimal only goes to nine, but there's actually more available in the four bit system. There's more values that can be populated that's not being taken advantage of. And in hexadecimal, we're maximizing these four bits. And this has a pretty profound effect on how easy it is to read and write binary. Because what this means is hex perfectly folds into binary or perfectly maps to binary. So we can treat a binary number of any length into blocks of four and use the hex digit to represent that block. So in the example from before where we have these values, these are eight bit values. So it's one, zero, one, one, and one, zero, 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 right? It's eight bits. And we know that we know what it's worth. We know what, uh, what it means. But in hex, instead of having to calculate the entire byte, we can just break it up into these smaller parts. In this case, the eight bits turn on. So it's just an eight here. And over here, you would memorize it very quickly if you used hex. But in this case, we know it's 11 and 11 in hex is B. So this is sort of the indicator for hex. It's not always used. But in this case, this simple, this pattern just becomes B8 in hex, we could say. And it's very, very easy. And then to write B8. Now, again, you'd, you'd probably, you'd memorize this if you're using it on a daily basis. But for now, we could just use this little chart. Anytime we want to write B, we just write 1011. And you can see how you can memorize this pretty easily. It's only 15 values above zero. And nine of them are, are you know, the direct counterparts of decimal. So all you'd have to do is just memorize this. And if you're using it on a daily basis, you'd memorize this probably within a day or two of using it constantly. So with hex, we don't need to do any calculations. We don't need to do any conversions. We can simply write it out. So if I zoom in a bit onto this so we can see. So now what we can do is just sort of rapid fire these. We know that this is B8. This is zero, zero, of course, because it's all zero, 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 zero. This is this is one five, and that's all it is. Moving on to the next one, we have B and B again. Then these are all zeros, of course, zero, 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 zero. And then here, he's sort of a fat number, but in, de in uh, hex, it's pretty easy. This is an E, and this is a D. So all we're gonna do is just break these up into four bit segments, and it becomes really, really, really easy to read. This is an eight, this is one, this is three, eight, zero, 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 F, zero, B, zero, two, zero, one. My handwriting is terrible, but again, the idea here is not to interpret it into a value where you can add or subtract, because in that case, I'm assuming you'd convert this now to decimal. But this is really just so that you know that instead of one, zero, one, 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 zero, 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 to move to EAX register, you just say B8. And you could write it down, you could read it, and it just becomes super, super simple. And then when you need to translate it, it's also easy, obviously, because you know B is 1011 and 8 is 1000. So it just becomes very functional if you're reading and writing binary a lot. And this is why memory addresses are used in binary. Another thing that's used a lot is the RGB colors. So you might see something like FF08CC. And what this means is we have one, two, three bytes, so 24 bits. To represent color. And all we're doing here is writing the value of each color. So in this case, this color looks like it's heavy in red because all the red is turned on, right? So we have one, 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 one in red, one, 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 right? Two Fs. So all the bits are turned on. We have a zero, eight in green, so it's a little weak in green. So we have zero, 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 zero. And then eight, of course, is one, zero, zero, zero. Only the eight bit is turned on. 
And in this case, we're not really changing these into four bit values, but we're just able to interpret them as two four bit values, but it's still one byte, right? That's important to, uh, to sort of uh, confirm. And then the last color, which is our blue, seems to be sort of a moderate value, I guess, pretty high. Uh, C is what, 1100, 1100, and 1100. So doing this in decimal would be a bit of a nightmare. All the bits are turned on, so that's an easy one. That's 255. Then we have a, well, I was, in a, I was about to write zero and then add a value, but really it's different. So this is just an eight, the entire uh, byte, right? The eight bits. And this one would be kind of a mission to, to convert, so I won't do that. But we can see how in decimal, you know, you have to think about it. You have this thought process and you have, you have a lot of work to do. But in, in the case of hex, we just know that it's a C and a C. So that becomes really easy. So that's why it's used for stuff like color as well. I have this from our previous video. These values here, you know, this is perfect to, to convert into, into hex. So it's what, seven, four, right, in hex. So this is 74. This looks like ATF, 8F, ADF. This one looks like four, and then what is that? One zero, oh, sorry, it's two, made a mistake, two, A. And I don't really use hex often, but again, if you did, you would really just become super rapid fire at, at hex. So if you want to talk about why this is the case, I sort of touched on it before. With decimal, when we're going to add one more value, we have to add a whole column, right? It overflows. This new column is added for us to get to 10. But the binary doesn't need to add a column yet. However, with hex, as we add a new column, in this case, it would also overlap to the value 10, meaning 1 times 16 plus 0, which is 16, then the binary itself also needs to add a new column, right? To cover that number. And we're not talking about being stuck in a 4-bit system or 8-bit. We're just talking about pure mathematics. So the fact that they need to add a column at the same time shows that, that the hex maps perfectly to those values. So by the way, if you wanted to see what would happen if we try to do the same system, so let's say that we have the values like 1011 uh, and 1111. In hex, this is B, F. And you might say, well, why can't we do that with decimal? It seems reasonable. Uh, but if we try to do it in decimal, then 1011, we, again, we don't have a letter for that, right? So we'd have to say it's 11. So in this case, we're gonna say it's 11 and then all the bits turned on we know is 15. So we'd say 15. So it's 1115, right? But 1115 is actually not that value at all. Uh, this is 1115. And 1115 in, in decimal, I'm not gonna do the calculation here. This is obviously the incorrect value. It, this is over 1000, uh, not quite over 9000, but it's over 1000. And we can see that the highest bit available in an 8-bit system is 128. So we're nowhere near 1,000. If you turn on all the bits, and it's really 255. So that doesn't work. Um, you could try some other tricks, but really, you're never going to get to the efficiency that we have with hexadecimal. Let's talk more about why this is the case. So if we look at our binary values, 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128, these are actually the powers of 2, right? Which we know already. So this is actually 2 to the 0th power. And then 2 to the 1st power is 2. 2 to the 2nd is 4. 2 to the 3rd is 8. And 2 to the 4th is 16. And if we look at these two numbers here, it basically is saying that a hexadecimal number, a, de a, a number with 16 digits, base 16, is going to give us four bits perfectly utilized. Because since we're in a power of two, the hex value is going to perfectly wrap. And we see that that here, right? We have our base 16. So this is base 16. And we have our 16 values, which perfectly maps to a four bit system. Another example that we can use, and it's one of my, one of the most used ones for me, is octal, which is eight. So eight goes with a three. And we can see that if we have values from one or zero to seven, this is eight values. So this is base eight. 
and we map it to binary. I mean, I, you probably don't need to see this example, but this is obviously 0, 0, 0. And again, we have three bits because it's the third power of two. So this one is 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1, 1. We can see that this also perfectly maps to it. And it's even easier to remember than hex. The only problem is that ever since the byte was kind of standardized as 8 bits, then hex just makes more sense because this is 3 and it doesn't fit into 8 and, and all that. But this is really good, Octal, for like permission files, uh, you know, kernel development or file systems or anything really low level. Then Octal suddenly becomes a lot more viable, just as much as, as hex in some cases, when you have bit patterns that perhaps are not divisible by 4 perfectly. You might have a 9-bit pattern that represents some... Uh, permission file or, or a file type, file permission, that kind of thing. And in this case, if we have some random numbers here, we can just, I don't know why I did two of the same. I'm sorry. <laughs> not very creative. Uh, here we can see, you know, 101, we just knock these out. Five, five, sadly, seven, six, one. Right? And this would be octal, which in programming, this is zero. For now, we'll just know this is octal. Another thing that you can do is write an eight in a, in a subscript. And this kind of usually indicates a base that we're talking about. But we don't need to get into that. I mean, really, in this case, this would be five, five, seven, six, one. And then we'd put the eight down there. And that would indicate this entire length. So this kind of shows uh, hex and octal why they're so great for representing binary. It doesn't matter how long your binary pattern goes. In decimal, it will just become more and more complicated to, to convert. But in, in hex, it doesn't matter at all. You just move along. Four bits, you write the value. Four bits, you write the value. Four bits. And then writing it back is just as easy. I hope this helps to demonstrate why hex has become sort of a, a king when it comes to interacting with binary. It makes it really, really easy and it's very compact. You know, we turn eight digits into two and we can break it apart as much as we need. So I hope this helps.